Hey there kids, welcome to another math video. This is for Eureka Math, grade five, module five, lesson five. Homework, a lot of fives right there. Anyway, it's kind of a cool lesson um, and I would like to insist that you go watch the problem set video before you even attempt this because the problem set allows you to learn this very, very important concept that you're gonna have to explain in number three. Also, you should have done your homework, but this is kind of a, it's got a couple of things on here that are very confusing for kids. So I understand if you don't get it and you're checking in because you wanna know how to do this. So we're gonna do this together possibly if you are stuck. So anyway, um, the objective is at the bottom of the page. As usual, use multiplication to connect volume as packing with volume as filling. And so really what we're trying to do here um, is understand that you can use your uh, length times width times height formula when you have a rectangular prism. These are all rectangular prisms. That means it's all filled evenly to, um, to complete a whole face uh, as opposed to having little gaps in, in like little holes or spaces where it's not filled. So anyway, um, let's get into it. And again, go watch the problem set if, if you didn't already, because that's very, very helpful. Now, the first problem with, um, with this assignment is the first problem. It's very poorly written. Okay, now I've taught this for many years, and we would all look at it, and we're like, okay, well, what are they talking about? We have to fill this container, assuming that this is the container they're talking about. Well, they're not actually talking about this container. They're talking about a different container. So if they really wanted this to be a good question, different, it would be a different container, not this one. So Johnny filled a other container with 30 centimeter cubes. Now what that means is he filled it, okay? Didn't just put 30 centimeter cubes into this one shade the beaker to show how much water the container will hold. The other container, not this one. Now for years and years, we would understand the concept that the 30 centimeter cubes would take up 30 milliliters, and then we would fill it with, uh, with water to 70 so that the 70 plus the 30 would make the, the uh, 100. However, what they would like you to do is this is supposed to be giving you the option so that you could make mistakes on it. And they're saying, okay, well, out of all these options, how much water could that container hold? And so they're telling you right here, 30 centimeters is equal to 30 milliliters. And so what you should do is you should fill this or shade this to the 30. That's what they want you to do. But for many years, my students and I, we had filled it up. We said, well, if this is already filled with 30 um, centimeter cubes, then the only amount of water you could do would be the 70 because 70 plus 30 equals, equals 100. And so however you decided to do it or however your teacher decided to do it, um, just be aware that one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. And so if you have 30 centimeters, it equals 30 milliliters. So technically you should fill this to the 30. But if you thought that the 30 cubes were in this container and you're talking about filling this container, then that would have to be plus 70 so that you could get the 100. So either way, just explain yourself and try to show what you're doing there. Uh, now, moving on to number two. A beaker contains 250 milliliters of water. Jack wants to pour the water into a container that will hold the water. Got a lot of choices here. Which of the containers pictured below could he use? And then you have to explain your choices. Now, your explanation is gonna be in the math, okay? And you're gonna write too big, too small, just right um, with your, your Goldilocks method. Uh, now, what we have here is the length, width, and height sometimes hard to determine because the 12 centimeters is actually closer to this one, but this is the area of the base or the face here, 
And then this is the dimension that they're also giving you for the height. Remember I said height can be in any direction. It doesn't just have to be up down. It depends on where the area of the base is. And so the base on this one is on the front face. Now this one is the, right here, the width. So I would call this the width, length, height. And so you just, there's no getting around this. You have to find the volume of each figure, if you can, and then explain your choices. So um, in any order, use your formula. Okay, so volume equals length times width times height. Use your formula, fill in. There's um, any order you can, but if you happen to know that that's 144, that saves you that double digit multiplication. And then use the standard algorithm. Six times four, 24, 24 for that one, and then 25, 26. Six uh, plus two is eight. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what we're doing is we're saying, okay, if the volume of this container is 864 milliliters, and again, it would be 864 centimeters cubed, but that's also equivalent to milliliters, then will it hold the 250 milliliters? So yes, because this is greater than the 250, yes, it has enough room. Okay, and so your explanation is here that this is equal to this and this is greater than that and so you would be able to fill uh, this container with the water. Okay, so now for B, we have the area of the base that's been given to you and it's like, thank you, they already did half the work because with the volume formula, the area of the base is length times width. So they've already given you the answer to the length times the width. They said it's 20. Now you just have to multiply by 12. So I always like to put the zeros on the bottom because then I only have one line of data because the zero gives me my ones place and then I scooch over. So I have 240 centimeters cubed, which is also milliliters. And so the container, uh, the beaker that contains the water is 250. And 250 is greater than 240. So this one's too small. Okay, so B is too small. A has enough room. How about E? They gave us the area of this face. And so this would be like the length or the width here and the length across. So you're trying to use the dimensions that they gave you and this is the height. So this is already calculated. So if you plug in your values, then this is all you have to multiply for this one. Five times three, 15. Then I have 21 plus one is 22. And so if the volume of this container is 225, let's just label it straight away, milliliters, even though it's centimeters cubed when we're done, the uh, container is 250. So compare those. And 250 is greater than 225, so no, E is too small. And again, you're comparing and showing what the answer is. Uh, C is up here. So I've got my length, width, height. The You could say length, width, height. And uh, set this up with your formula. 25 times 5 times 2. And I'd love to get a 10 because that makes my multiplication really easy. And so this one would be 250 milliliters or 250 centimeters cubed. And 250 is exactly what we need. So C equals yes. It has just enough 
room. Okay, so we've got C for yes and A for yes and B and E are a no, no. So what's left with D? Well, we have our length here and we have our width here. And I don't know if it's a misprint or if they just want you to like rationalize and reason. There is no height and there has never been a height in any of the years that they've printed this textbook. And so there's not enough information, <laughs> not enough info, we need the height. And so we just need to have a number and it's always been like that because the kids will say, oh, well, the area of the base is 15. And I'm like, yeah, but um, we don't have the height. And so it can look tall, but if you don't have the number, you would not want to speculate. So uh, the last question, it says on the back of this paper and we never turn it over, we just do our work right here. Describe the details of the activities you did in class today. Include what you learned about cubic centimeters and milliliters. Give an example of a problem you solved with an illustration. Now, what I am hoping that you guys know and that you already did, because you shouldn't be copying it from me, you should be putting it down, taking it out of your own brain, is that cubic centimeters or centimeters cubed are equal exactly to milliliters. Now that's what we learned today. That was the objective and we did the lesson and if you saw that problem set video, you saw me with my, my graduated cylinder, which in my class today we did it again and we had 80 milliliters of water and then we put in a drop uh, from my one milliliter dropper and that was one and then we put in the cube and that was also one. So one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. It's one to one ratio. So what you could do if you had watched that or were in my class or watched the video and then you've got this graduated cylinder, you could divide it and let's pretend this is the base. <laughs> And so then you would have your um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so in my class, we filled it up to uh, 80. You can, it, your class could have been different. It could have been 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever. And then we did a plus one uh, cubic centimeter, oops, MCM. And that equaled one milliliter. And so we took our little cube. You could put your cube in the bottom there if you want. If you want to do a little 3D thing. Okay. And then that bumped it up to like 81. If you put the water in, that was one uh, milliliter. And if you put the water and then the cube, then that would have been 82. So it depends on what you did in your class. We did plus one milliliter, and then plus one cubic centimeter. So we had 80 plus one plus one. So we had a total of 82 milliliters by the time we were done. And so if you draw that, that's kind of evidence that you learned that this is equal to this. Very, very important concept. I know this is gonna come up on tests. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful and click subscribe and come back again. We'll see you on the next one. Goodbye for now.